This is my homemade wood processor. Here's all the control valves to operate all the hydraulics. Here's the engine area. Oil pressure, oil temperature, you got your light control, your fans, Hobbs or uh, hour meter, all that stuff. There's the bar. I got the chain off being sharpened right now. The log gets split. This then dumps the log down into the splitter. And then you've got either a six way or a four way splitter on the bottom, depending on what type of log you got. Here's the engine. It's a six cylinder Ford. Radiator fan. Hydraulic reservoir with the hydraulic fan and radiator. Gas tank. Hitch for towing it with your truck. Right in this area is where the conveyor belt hooks onto. I don't have it in my driveway right now. But the conveyor belt goes right here and then loads the logs onto the platform. So it's designed so that you can split about a cord to two cords an hour depending on how quickly you're going. Basically just pull up your stool, sit down right here, you operate all these levers and the uh, the wood gets split and then it gets dropped into conveyor belt which I don't have hooked up right now but the conveyor belt would then lift it up and drop it into a big pile or into your truck. So I bought this wood processor four years ago. I did four main improvements to it after I bought it. First thing I did is I welded on these uh, this red hydraulic cylinder you see here on each corner and it's used to stabilize the wood processor and more importantly to level it um, so you can you can raise it up to uh, I think it's three feet three or three and a half feet up or down um, so if you're parked on a uneven surface or in mud or something you can you can raise it so it's got one of those on all four corners the second thing I did is install a lighting system just for uh, those late night splits you've got four lights and you've got one here two there one up there and then this one is designed to shine down on the uh, conveyor belt and then I installed the fan you see there on the hydraulic uh, radiator and then I put a bigger fan onto the main radiator for the engine just for those real hot summer days keep it cool and the last thing I did is I installed this guy right here on a cylinder every once in a while when the log rolls down it'll roll down in here crooked and then this is used to just basically straighten out the log um, so you don't have to reach your hands in there um, I started to cover the engine. You can see the tin right here. I was going to put a little roof right here, but I uh, thought I might leave that to the next guy because it's not needed unless you're going to store it outside. Oh, I just started it up and deployed the stabilizer jacks, all four of them. You can see the tires off the ground. And like I said, they let you let you get it level, raise it up if you need to get off the mud or something like that. These stabilizer jacks have a special valve right here that keeps the cylinder from leaking over time. It's a check valve. 
So if you if you deploy that stabilizer jack and you raise it up, the pressure isn't going to slowly leak out like it will in most cylinders. Whatever does leak out is going to get trapped in this check valve and basically it's not going to settle overnight. Uh, I've got one of these check valves on each of the cylinders. There's the second one. There's the third one. And there's the fourth one. Uh, the engine drive shafts comes to this area right here where there's two hydraulic pumps. Uh, this one powers everything except for the main splitter right there. And the main splitter cylinder is powered by that pump right there. Pretty simple.